Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we're gonna do something really, really interesting. So, Andrew Jagd ended up destroying the lineup at the Texas Pro 2024. Needless to say, he, he won, he wiped the floor with everybody, basically. It wasn't even funny, it wasn't really a contest. He, he won that show, basically, from his hotel room. And uh, now, the question is, where will this version of Andrew Jagd place at the Mr. Olympia, because he truly brought a much improved version of himself. Even though last year he already placed fifth at a Mr. Olympia with not the best conditioning, he was slightly off. What does this mean for the 2024 Mr. Olympia now that he is qualified and much improved? He definitely uh, got bigger and also he brought a really good conditioning to this stage. So if he brings, let's say, the same condition, he can improve it maybe a little bit, maybe he can be a little bit sharper for the Mr. Olympia, but let's just say he brings the same thing, because he never really brought his absolute best at the Mr. Olympia stage. Every time he did a Mr. Olympia, he was slightly worse, or quite a bit worse, than his Mr. Olympia qualifier. So if we assume that he's gonna bring a good conditioning, finally, that he's gonna peak for the Mr. Olympia right for the first time, I think he competed at the Mr. Olympia twice, now it is gonna be his third one and third one is usually a charm so hopefully third one is gonna be really good if he does that if he brings good conditioning and let's say he repeats the same package exactly the same package like at a Texas Pro because this is a really good addition of Andrew Jack if he comes in just like this where will he place and it's very interesting that a lot of people are having Andrew Jack in their top three or even top two and i'm not even talking only about the casual fans i'm actually talking about some experts some uh, bodybuilders professional bodybuilders who have seen all these guys on, on mr olympia stage and who believe now that andrew jack is top two or top three for example we have Ian Valier, who is, you know, usually pretty honest with his assessments. Like, he has no reason to suck up to Andrew Jack. He's just saying uh, the way he sees it. And he says, crazy too, that Andrew was over 290 pounds in this condition. I'm sure many thought when they saw him step on that scale that he would be big, but not quite there conditioning-wise. But this is a crazy, crazy good package and challenges Olympia top three all day, in my opinion. And then there is also Nathan Diasha in his usual style, insulting everybody. But the thing with Nathan is he's always uh, like putting down all other bodybuilders. He's never really impressed with anybody. He believes everybody is inferior to him. And here he puts Andrew quite up high. So he says, I see so many idiots saying top 5 or top 4 Olympia, but this is a top 2 physique, so he's basically saying that everybody who says that, that Andrew Jack is gonna be top 4 is an idiot and that he's gonna either win the Mr. Olympia or be the runner-up. I mean, that's a huge statement, especially coming from Nathan Diasha. And then there's also Flex Lewis, who is, you know, staying a little bit more, uh, like, politically correct in terms of doesn't wanna insult anybody else, you know, especially the guys who are at the top of the Mr. Olympia already, and he's just putting this emoji of, like, uh, Andrew is climbing up, and he means he's climbing up in places, of course, and uh, he's gonna go from fifth to, you know, I don't know, fourth, third, something like that, um, and there is also a trophy, so I don't know if that means that he believes that Andrew is gonna win the Mr. Olympia, but, you know, it could mean something. Anyways, a lot of people, a lot of comments are saying that Andrew Jack is now a top three bodybuilder in the world, and when I look at his physique, do I think uh, it is a top three physique in the world? Well, when you look at this, like him just standing alone, doing his posing routine, hitting his signature poses and so on, this doesn't look like a physique that can be beaten by many bodybuilders in the world right now. It does look incredibly impressive, but I think we're gonna get a clearer picture after we see a comparison. So, let's assume that Andrew Jack is battling for the third spot in the world. Let's say he is top three. Where in the top three would he place? Well, first of all, in order for him to, you know, be in the top three, he needs to beat Brandon Curry, who beat him last year. I think he can do that quite easily. I think so, right now. And then he needs to beat Nick Walker. And I can see him beating Nick Walker, most likely. Now, as far as beating Samson Dauda, 
I doubt that. I honestly doubt that. But let's assume he does that because the talk is top three, top two. It's not top four. And right now, officially, um, Samson is third in the world. He is not second. He is not first. He was beaten by Hari at the Arnold Classic and at the Mr. Olympia. He was beaten by Derek by two spots in the Mr. Olympia. So officially, right now, Samson is third. He might even win the Mr. Olympia, in my opinion. But right now, this is the way it is. These are the top two guys. Derek, the current Mr. Olympia. Hadi, the former Mr. Olympia and the Arnold Classic champion. And let's put Andrew in this mix. And let's see how he compares against these two guys. Because they have much different physiques from him. In a separate video, we can do a comparison between Andrew and Nick and, 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 and Samson, for example. But right now, let's focus on the top three, the current top three. So let's start with the front double bicep. I think the ratio here is quite good, and I think the angle is also comparable. I think this is exactly, or, or very close to what it's going to look like on that stage. I mean, we're going to see what these guys are going to look like also. I mean, Derek and Hadi can also be better and improved, but it is what it is. This is what we have right now. So, front double bicep. Obviously, Andrew is a lot bigger than these guys, like, with stature. Like, he's a taller guy, and he does pack quite a lot of muscle. Once again, over 290 in good condition, in pretty good condition. How much of an advantage height really is? I think it is an advantage if you are packing the same amount of muscle on your frame like the shorter guys. Then you have an advantage. But if you are smaller on your frame than the shorter guys, then height doesn't really matter at all, especially in open bodybuilding. In classic, sure. In open bodybuilding, I didn't see that, I'll be honest. So as far as like body parts, in the front double, like all front poses basically... It looks like Andrew has the best legs here. Definitely better legs than Derek. Maybe not better than Hadi's, but very, very close in the ballpark. Now, as far as the shape, the silhouette, because of the leg size, I think he has a better silhouette, better X frame than Derek. And also probably better than Hadi. So, like, he's, he has a better structure, nicer shape. As far as size... You know, it kind of still feels like the other two guys are just, you know, bigger, more massive in their upper bodies. You know, like lats, uh, chest, arms, everything is just, you know, a little bit thicker and, and rounder and fuller. But Andrew is also really big and his conditioning here was really, really good. So as far as the front double bicep, I can see him beating these guys in this pose if he shows up like this. You know, bigger, with this crazy condition, he can definitely hang and potentially beat these guys in this pose. Now, as far as the front lat spread, I'll give him this one. I'll just give him this one. I think he wins this one against these two guys quite handily, honestly. Like, his X-frame is absolutely nuts here. His waist looks the smallest. His shoulders are really wide compared to his waist. And then his quads are popping out like crazy. I think front of the lat spread is his best pose along with uh, the abs and thighs. And like with his height, with the conditioning and like details throughout the chest, throughout the midsection and the quads as well. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see him beating them in the front lat spread. All right, now in the side chest pose, this is where Andrew is facing some problems against these two guys. These two guys, Derek and Hadi, are really thick from the side, especially, especially Derek, in my opinion. Like, his width to the shoulders and chest is really good, and his side leg is crazy. Like, the glutes are conditioned, the hamstrings are dropping low. Like, he is very, very thick in the side poses, and Hadi is as well. He also has crazy separation in the legs. His chest is, is incredible. He's also very wide. And Andrew, he's definitely a little bit slim, still, still. I was hoping that maybe he got thick enough to be to look like very, very wide from the side, but it's not the case, unfortunately. It's definitely not the case. He's definitely not hanging against these guys. It's not even close, honestly. Like he's definitely a lot, a lot slimmer than them in the side pose, especially side chest. Now, side tricep is tricky, because the way Andrew is hitting it is phenomenal. It's one of his best-looking poses. If he was a classic physique competitor, this would have to be his favorite classic pose, because he looks so, so insane with the, with the abs looking like this, with a small waist, with the details in the legs. It's so aesthetic, the arms looking crazy, the shoulder width, like the chest is popping out, everything is insane, but... Is this the correct way to hit the side tricep? Are the judges going to be okay with him hitting it this way? 
this is the way he's gonna hit it, but how much points is he gonna lose if he does it this way? The other two guys are doing it the proper way. This pose is called side triceps, so it's very important to show your side and your triceps, and Andrew is not really doing that too much. You can, you can see his triceps, because they're so massive, they're popping from every angle, basically. But, like, he's not really showing us his side. He, this is basically a front tricep pose. Or, like, abs and thighs, which your hands behind your back instead of behind your head. So, this is not exactly the proper way to hit a side tricep. The way he's doing it is phenomenal, but I don't think this is gonna fly. I don't think this is the way to hit this pose. If he did it the conventional way, you would still see what you saw in the side tricep. That he is not thick enough. And therefore, I don't, I don't see him winning against these guys in the side tricep. Alright, now when they face the curtain, when they show us their backs, this is what we're gonna see. So definitely a lack of uh, details and conditioning in the glutes on Andrew's part. He's definitely not as ripped, not as shredded, not as dry in the glutes and hamstrings like Derek Lansford or even like Heidi Chopin, but Heidi was definitely a lot more conditioned in that area at the Arnold Classic and that's what's going to bring uh, to this stage this year. Also, the lower back is going to be more diced. So, I mean, nobody's beating Derek in the back double bicep. Nobody. That's like one of the best back double biceps of all time. Like, after Ronnie Coleman and maybe Phil Heath, Derek's back double bicep is one of the best in history. So, Andrew can't beat him in this one. And I don't see him beating Hardy either, honestly. Like, he still needs more density, more thickness. Like, sure, he's aesthetic and all that, but... I want to see more lines in the glutes, better conditioning um, in the lower back, in the lower back, in the in the glutes, in the hamstrings, and just overall more size. The other two guys are just way thicker, so they are beating him in the back double bicep. Back lat spread, pretty much the same story. Only in this one, Andrew is just you know big. He's tall. He's also very wide. His back is massive. So he's definitely holding his own in this one, he's definitely closer to these guys, but again, like, uh, with those glutes looking like that, with those with that thick skin, like, without crazy separation in the glutes and hamstrings, and also, like, these guys, I mean, Derek, look at Derek's back, and Hardy's as well, there is a lot of thickness there, a lot of density in, in the lats, in the traps, everywhere, I mean, Andrew is hanging for sure in this one, it's not like back double bicep, it's much closer, but still, I don't see him beating Derek. Maybe he can beat Hardy, but I don't know about that. Again, Hardy is going to be much better this year than he was last year at the Mr. Olympia. So even in the back last spread, I have him third here. All right, now we come to the abs and ties. And he is for sure annihilating Derek Lansford. Derek's abs and ties is not his best pose, <laughs> not even close. When he pulls a vacuum, he looks phenomenal, but that's not the way to hit this pose. It's the same story like with the side tricep and Andrew Jack. So, in the absent ties, actual absent ties, Andrew Jack is be beating everybody in the world, basically, uh, right now. And, like, if you talk about a history of bodybuilding, I can think of uh, Sean Rodin potentially having a better absent ties pose than Andrew Jack, and that's probably it. I don't know many, many more bodybuilders, uh, top Olympians since, let's say, the 90s, who had better absent eyes than Andrew Jacked, you know, so he's definitely in this pose, he won it last year, probably, against all these guys at the Mr. Olympia, or the year before, really, but if we talk about the best absent eyes in history, Hari Chopin must be in that mix as well, if you talk about the, the, the actual look of the midsection, like of the abs and everything, all the details in the midsection, then Hari is probably the best in that, Probably even better than Andrew Jack or Sean Roden, but the way um, Andrew's physique flows in this pose, like with his small waist, with the lats popping, with uh, the crazy axe frame, with the legs and everything, I think he's better than Hardy, but slightly. Maybe he's actually not even better, we'll see on stage, but I think this one is very close between Hardy and, and, and Andrew, and Derek is definitely losing this one by pretty much everybody in the top six, let's be real. And the last pose, most muscular, this one, Hot is gonna win this one. Yeah, Andrew is great, for sure, he has these crazy details and everything, but still, guys, compare the, the freaking thickness, look at how massive Hot is. The size of his shoulders and arms and chest and legs and everything is definitely way more compact. I mean, Andrew is taller, he's a bigger man, but Hot is just packing way more muscle than him. 
And Derek is also like he's holding his own. He's at the hardest level of thickness. Like he's definitely that big. Andrew, I mean, if he wanted to be this big as these two guys, he would have to weigh more than 300 pounds on stage at his height of like six foot two or something like that. So even though when you see Andrew jacked like this, posing alone, hitting his signature poses, he does look like one of the best physiques of all time, really. But when we see him compared to the best in the world. Unlike in this show, he was compared to guys who won't even go to the Mr. Olympia stage, who don't even have a rank, really. And when he goes against the top 1 and 2 and 3, I think it's gonna be a much different story. According to Nathan Diasha, I am an idiot, but that's the way I see it. I don't think Andrew is on that level yet. Even though he does look like one of the best physiques in the world, when we see him compared to the other guys who are just much thicker, much bigger, especially in the side pose and the back poses, I think, I think he's gonna be potentially top four best case scenario. That's the way I see it. If you guys disagree, tell me down below. I still think this is a huge improvement and that Andrew Jack is uh, gonna jump place. He's gonna beat uh, Brandon Curry this year, maybe even Nick Walker. But as far as Samson Hardy and Derek, I don't know about that. Whatever you guys think, make sure to let me know down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.